now uh, if there are no questions what we'll do is uh, move on to uh, systematic ways of uh, analyzing circuits okay uh, we have now discussed the number of circuit elements and they can be interconnected in any way and we have to be able to find the solution to the network that means that we have to be able to find the voltage across any branch any component and the current through any component okay and this uh, process is known as circuit analysis okay and as we know a circuit is an interconnection of a number of uh, elements okay now uh, the elements that we know of are two terminal elements you can have more than uh, two terminals but for now let's uh, stick to two terminal elements okay so as an example let me take something this is just some example that uh, i'm going to show okay so you see a number of elements we have a number of uh, current sources and resistors connected up like this and when we are uh, discussing circuits in general and not uh, specifics of each component we use uh, some terminology that is generally applicable to any element now the point of uh, interconnection of uh, many terminals this is called a node okay now how many nodes uh, does this circuit have uh, this is a question for the participants how many nodes does this circuit have so i see a number of uh, answers here uh, many of you say it is 4 and that is correct okay so we have uh, we have one node here another node here another node here and this whole thing it's right uh, written as an extended line but of course this is a node okay for convenience we write it like that but if you just have a wire that is a node okay so we have uh, four nodes in the circuit now now each element or whatever is connected between uh, two nodes such as this resistance here okay this resistance is connected between this node and that node and that constitutes a branch okay now how many branches do we have in this uh, circuit
each element because we have only two terminal elements each element corresponds to a branch so how many branches do we have in the circuit So, many of you again said, uh, gave the answer correctly that there are eight branches. Now, sometimes you can combine two parallel elements into a single element and call that a single branch. Right now, I will consider each of these things as a branch, okay? Each of these elements, that is a branch, so is this and this, 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 so that's five, six, seven and eight, okay? So, we have... Uh, eight branches okay now when we say we have to uh, solve a circuit that is we have to do circuit analysis what it means is that you have to find the voltage across every branch every element and the current through every branch or element okay so that's the meaning of uh, the statement that i have solved for this circuit okay then you know everything about what each element is doing okay for instance if you have a voltage source you can figure out whether it is dissipating power, whether it's consuming power or how much power it is consuming or dissipating and so on. Same for a resistor. So, uh, given that, uh, how many variables do we have to solve for? Okay. If we have uh, eight branches, how many variables do we have to solve for? No, I see a number of answers with uh, numbers like 3, 4, 5 and so on. But uh, my question is the following, right? We have uh, 8 branches in the circuit. Okay. Now, I want to know the current and voltage across every branch. And those are the unknowns, right? So, how many variables are there to be solved for? Perhaps the question is not clear. Maybe I will pose it as multiple choice so that everybody can take another shot at it. I opened a poll with uh, the choices, please answer on that one. What is the number of variables to be solved for 4, 8, 16 or 20? Okay, now it appears that uh, some of you have said uh, 4 and some of you have said 16 and 16 is the correct answer of course because see if you have 8 branches each branch has a voltage and a current and you have to find out all of it 
okay now some of that may be easy like for instance if you have a current source you already know the current through that but that was not the point of my question okay uh, the thing is there are 16 variables to be solved for and somehow or the other we have to find 16 equations from which we can solve these uh, 16 variables okay now whether it's easy or difficult that's a different thing so finally when you say that I have solved for this circuit completely, you, ha you have to specify the voltage and current in each branch, voltage across each branch and current through each branch. Okay, so that is what is meant by solving for a circuit. So in general, let's say you have a circuit with N nodes and B branches. Okay, you have two times B variables to be solved for okay so in our case b is 8 but uh, whatever the number of branches you have uh, you have to solve for 2b variables okay is this fine Now, uh, the question is, what are the uh, 2B equations, okay? So, this means that need 2B equations, okay? Now, what are these? What are the equations that will govern our circuit? First of all, <coughs> At every node, you can write Kirchhoff's current law and around every loop, we can write Kirchhoff's voltage law and finally, we have VI relationships of each element. Okay. So from these things, we have to pick the appropriate uh, set of equations and then solve for the circuit, okay? I hope this is uh, clear so far. Now, uh, so let's go through these things one by one. As all of you know, uh, to solve for 2B variables, we need to have 2B independent equations, okay? Because uh, if you have some dependent equations, they are useless, right? I think all of you know what dependent and independent equations are. If you have a set of equations, now if some equation can be generated as a linear combination of other equations, then that's a dependent equation. Meaning, it's not telling you anything that the other equations are not saying, okay? For instance, You have one equation over here, x plus y equal to 0. And let's say you have another equation which says 3x plus 3y equals 0. Clearly, you can get this by multiplying the first equation by a factor 3. Okay. Now, if you do that, then that means that this is not telling you anything that the first one did not tell you. Okay. So, this is... dependent on first equation. So, this is not useful. Now, if you had a second equation which was let us say 3x plus 2y equal to 0, clearly you cannot uh, get this by multiplying this by any number. Okay, This is an independent equation of this one. So, using these two, you would be able to solve for both variables x and y. Okay. So, now, uh, we have n nodes and we know that at every node we have uh, KCL equations. So my question is how many independent KCL equations do we have if we have n nodes? So if we have n nodes 
how many independent uh, kcl equations do we have at every node we know that the sum of currents flowing out of the node is zero okay that is always true but how many independent uh, uh, kcl equations can we generate So some of you said n and many of you also said n minus 1 okay and this is the correct answers there are n minus 1 independent KCL equations and that's because let me take a simpler circuit than what I had before. These are some elements right. While writing KCL, I don't care what elements they are because I'm only summing up the currents. Now let me call this N0, N1, N2, N3. Okay. And let me call these things I10, I12, I23, I20, and I30. Now what I'll do is I'll write KCL equations at every node and my convention is to take the sum of all currents flowing away from the node. Okay. Sum of currents flowing away from the node should be equal to 0. Now what is the equation for n1? We have two branches i10 and i12 as currents which are flowing away. So i10 plus i12 equals 0. Okay. And at node n2 we have I12 flowing in which is the same as minus I12 flowing out. We have I23 flowing out and I20 flowing out. Okay. Minus I12 plus I23 plus I20 equals 0. Finally, at node N3, not finally, at node N3 we have I23 flowing in which is the same as minus I23 flowing out and I30 also flowing out. So I have minus I23 plus I30 equal to 0. That is at node N3 and finally at node N0 we will have I10 plus I20 plus I30 equals 0. Okay. So at four nodes, I have written the four equations, but you see that, let me sum the first three. If I sum these three, the equations resulting at uh, uh, resulting at n1, n2 and n3, I sum the three equations, what will I get? i10 and i12 will cancel with this minus i12, i23 will cancel with this minus i23 and we will have i20 plus i30 equals 0. Okay. So the node at uh, n0, th the KCL equation at node n0 is the same as taking all the other KCL equations and uh, summing them together.
Okay. So the KCL equation here dependent on the KCL equations at n1, n2 and n3. Okay. So we do not have uh, 4 independent equations, we have only 3 independent equations. Now in general if you have n nodes, uh, KCL at one of the nodes will be dependent on uh, all dependent on the equations at all the other nodes. Okay, and this is quite easy to see. Now this uh, we have this circuit. What do we mean by uh, writing KCL at uh, node n zero? Essentially, we take this closed surface, and the sum of uh, currents leaving this surface will be equal to zero. Okay. By the way, uh, I have to change the notation on the last one. My usual notation was to take the currents flowing away. By this notation at N0, the currents flowing away are minus I10, minus I20 and minus I30. Okay. So this last one should have been minus I10, minus I20 and minus I30. The equation I had written was correct. But uh, the only thing was that uh, the signs were reversed. Okay, but that doesn't change the fact that it is dependent on all the others. Okay, so when I write uh, KCL at uh, equation n zero, I take this closed surface and say that sum of all of these currents uh, equals zero. Sum of all of the currents leaving this surface. Now, uh, instead of looking at Though looking at the surface surrounding node N0, let me look at this surrounding the rest of the circuit. Okay, So as it encloses this complete circuit, the sum of currents flowing in all these wires that are cutting the surface will also be equal to 0. Okay, Now you see that the surface enclosing N0 cuts these three wires and the surface enclosing the rest of the circuit also cuts the same wires. So uh, what you do, what you get by writing uh, KCL equations at n1, n2, n3 and then uh, summing them together is exactly the same as what you get by writing the KCL at n0. So in general, if you have an n node circuit, there will be n minus 1 independent KCL equations. Okay, is this clear? I hope uh, this is clear. If not, please ask your questions. Okay, now uh, I think it's uh, quite simple. The next thing is, I have the same circuit with n nodes and b branches. Okay, how many independent KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law equations do we have? Okay, please try to answer this one. How many uh, how many independent KVL equations do we have? That is you write KVL around every loop 
and you have to identify the independent loops. So how many independent KVL equations do we have? There are lots of loops, but we have to identify independent loops. For instance, I will take the same uh, simple circuit I had before. Now, I have a loop here, I have a loop here, and I have a loop here. Okay. So, how many would I have? Now, some of you have given answers and the answer seems to depend only on the number of nodes and that's a little strange because you would think that the number of loops uh, also would depend on the number of branches, okay? Because if you don't have a branch, then uh, you cannot form a loop, okay? Now, I'm not talking about this uh, specific circuit. If you have a circuit with N nodes and B branches, uh, how many independent KVL equations would we have? That's the question. Okay. Okay. So it looks like you're not able to identify. So let's go uh, step by step. Now, how do we uh, know how many independent loops do we have? So to do that, I will define what is known as a tree. Okay. So a tree is a set of branches that is out of all the branches uh, we have in the uh, of all the branches we have in the circuit we will choose a set of branches which cover every node without forming a loop okay that is what i mean is in this circuit i could choose this this and this okay now uh, they start from this node go to this one this one and this one so if i draw only that part of the circuit Okay, N0, N1, N2, N3. Now this will, uh, uh, this uh, set of branches covers all the four nodes, N0, N1, N2, N3, but there is no loop that is formed. Okay, that is very obvious from this. Now this is not the only choice. We can have some other choice like this. And there are many choices. I'm not going to list all of them. But for instance, you could have this and this one in the middle and this one. Okay, that is this is N0, N1, N2, N3. So there are many possible trees, but what each, what all the trees have in common is that they cover all the nodes without, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, without forming a loop. Okay, so now uh, this should be easier to answer. How many branches are there in a tree? How many branches would be there in a tree? We have a circuit with uh, N nodes and B branches. So how many branches would be there in a tree? Again, some of you are giving numerical answers. I am now interested in a general answer for a circuit with N nodes and B branches, not for this specific uh, circuit, okay? I think this, uh, most of you are able to get it correctly. There will be n minus 1 branches. Okay. Because if you have uh, n nodes, that is n0, n1, up to n, n minus 1. Okay. So you will have one branch from n0 to n1 and another from n1 to n2 and so on. Okay. And you need n minus 1 branches to form a tree. Okay, I think all of you, uh, most of you have got this correctly. 
right now uh, once you have a tree okay it's uh, very clear that if you add any more branches if you add one branch so you have a tree already so let me uh, redo this by numbering the branches let me redraw the circuit I'll la label the nodes N0, N1, N2, N3 and I'll uh, call the branches A, B, C, D, E. Okay, there are five branches in this circuit. Okay, now I'll identify a tree. This is my tree. Okay, N0, N1, N2, N3. And this particular tree I have chosen has these branches A, B and D. Okay. Now what I will uh, do is, so as I said, first of all, uh, with if you have a circuit with N nodes and B branches, any tree you choose will have n minus 1 branches okay so clearly the remaining branches will not be in the tree that is b minus n minus 1 branches not in the tree okay uh, we have a total of b branches and the tree has n minus 1 branches so the remaining b minus uh, n minus 1 branches or b minus n plus 1 branches will not be in the tree. Now what I will do is I will take my tree which is shown here and I will add one of the branches that is not in the tree. Okay. So in this case I have added branch C and then I will add another branch which is not in the tree. Okay. So for this uh, specific circuit by the way. The number of nodes is 4 and the number of branches is 5. So n minus 1 is 3. We have 3 branches in the tree here and b minus n plus 1 equals 2. Okay. So I have a possibility here and I have another possibility there. Okay. Now clearly if I add a branch that is not in the tree to the tree, I will form a loop. Okay, That is very clear because I have uh, gone through all the nodes uh, going uh, without forming a loop. Now if I add any extra branch, it has to be between the same nodes. I have already covered all the nodes, so it has to form a loop. Okay, So this forms one loop and this forms another loop. Okay, So that means that the number of independent loops is b minus n plus 1. Actually a couple of you had already got the answer RT and so on. Uh, so we have b minus n plus 1 independent loops. Now I will just go through the argument once more for clarity. In a circuit with uh, n nodes and B branches will have N minus 1 branches in a tree, B minus N plus 1 branches not in the tree. Okay. So now uh, adding a branch to a tree forms a loop okay and how many such possibilities are there we have b minus n plus 1 branches which are not in the tree so we go and add them on one by one to form each loop so that means that we'll have from these two you can infer that there'll be 
b minus n plus 1 independent loops okay so this uh, is some involved argument so if you have any questions or any doubts if something is not clear uh, please ask uh, now now somebody asked uh, what are branches any element is a branch something that is connected between two nodes okay now we are discussing circuit at a more abstract level Later, we'll go back to the specific circuit and uh, put a resistor or a current source or a voltage source and discuss that. But right now, any of those things can be a branch. Okay. Any questions? Okay, it appears that uh, there are no questions on what we discussed this far. So now let's uh, go on. Uh, some of the other things will become clear as we move along. So far we have n minus 1 independent KCL equations and We have uh, B minus N plus 1 independent KVL equations. Okay, that is B minus N plus 1 independent loops. Okay, so we have a total of uh, B equations. Okay, but we had two B variables, right? We B B branch voltages and B branch currents. So we need B more equations. Where will they come from? The question is between the KCL equations and KVL equations, together we have B equations. So where will the remaining B equations come from? We have uh, two B variables, right? If we have B branches, we have B branch voltages and B branch currents. Where do you think the rest of the B equations come from? Because to solve for two B variables, finally we need to have two B equations. of you said uh, it comes from the VI relationship of each element and that's correct. Some of you said Ohm's law but Ohm's law is very specific to a resistor. So we have uh, B elements or B branches and each element will have its own VI relationship. So we have B VI uh, relationships. Okay. And Together, we have two B equations. Okay. So with this, we can solve for uh, the two B variables, which are B branch voltages and B branch currents. Okay. So I hope this part is clear. Right now, we have discussed this analysis only at a high level. That is, we didn't go and analyze any specific circuit. 
but we only discussed how to set up the equations right now uh, there are many ways of going about this first we can look at some simple circuits see how to analyze them now i have chosen to go in the other uh, direction i will first show you how to analyze any circuit this is applicable to circuits of any complexity okay now of course you will not uh, if you have 100 nodes and uh, so many branches you will not analyze them by hand you will not be doing hand calculations you will set up the equations on a computer and solve it but this method will be applicable to those things as well okay so given this now we can go and uh, start with specific methods of circuit analysis okay is this clear any questions okay now uh, there are two methods of uh, circuit analysis first is called nodal analysis in this what you do is you start with kcl equations at the nodes okay and uh, once you put down the kcl equations you will solve for a number of things and then uh, you solve the complete circuit so the first thing you do is to write down the kcl equations and if you do that you are basically doing nodal analysis the second method is loop analysis where you start with kvl equations at around the loops okay and if you do this you are doing loop analysis we'll discuss this later and a subclass of this is known as mesh analysis okay so we will st first start with nodal analysis and see what it's all about okay so let me write down the original circuit i had i had this circuit and okay let me call this i1 and i3 i'll call this r11 r12 r13 sorry r23 r22 r33 r13 the reason for this naming will become very clear and let me call this node n0 this is n1 n2 n3 okay now uh, i said that we'll start with kcl equations at the nodes okay now uh, if we have n nodes it means that we have n minus 1 independent kcl equations that is if you have n nodes you will write this kcl at n minus 1 nodes and at one of the nodes you will not be writing the equation okay in this particular case we have four nodes and we will not be writing the equation at one of the nodes okay now it, let me choose that to be this bottom node n0 okay now such a node the node where you are not writing the kcl equation is called the reference node and again it, the reason for this terminology will become clear okay 
So what I'm going to do is to write uh, KCL equations at n1, n2, and n3. In this case, now I just arbitrarily chose not to write it at n0. You could have chosen uh, not to write it n1 and write it at n0, n2, n3, or uh, you can basically out of the n nodes, you can choose any one node and then uh, say that you are not going to write the equation at that node. Okay. So in my case, I will write KCL at n1, 2, and 3. Okay. Now, let me write the KCL at node n1. Obviously, the current in this branch plus the current in that branch plus the current in that branch plus the current in that branch equal 0. Okay. Now, I will also, uh, because we are trying to do this systematically for very large circuits, I will uh, use certain conventions in writing these equations. Okay. That is, what I will do is, I will have all the unknowns on the left hand side and all the knowns on the right hand side. Okay. And what are the knowns? What I mean by that is are the independent sources. Okay. Independent sources in the circuit. That is, so for instance, if I uh, write the KCL at this node, the current through R13 is unknown, current through R12 is unknown, R11 is unknown, all those things I will group on the left hand side and this uh, current uh, flowing out is due to a current source, independent current source. So that is a known quantity and I will push it to the right hand side. So the way I will write these equations will be summation of uh, currents leaving the node equals any independent current into the into the node okay so that's how i will write the equations and finally uh, here I have taken a circuit with uh, resistors and current sources. Later we will also add voltage sources and analyze them. Now I have to write the current in each of these resistors. Okay. And the resistor has a certain VI relationship. Now while writing the KCL equations, I will use that uh, current voltage relationship for the current through the resistors. Okay. So, for instance, what is the current through uh, this resistance R12? It will be the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance value. Okay. So, let me label that. For instance, let me call this uh, current uh, through R12 as I12. Okay. In this direction, going from left to right. Now, we know that. I12 will be equal to V12 divided by R12. Okay. The current through this resistor equals the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance value. Also, what I will do is I do not want to keep on writing uh, this thing in the denominator. So, instead of this, I will use the conductance form of Ohm's law, which says that it is V12 times G12. Okay. So, when I write this, it is implicit that G12 is 1 by R12. Okay. That is the conductance of this resistance, this resistor. So, I12 is the conductance G12 times the voltage V12. I will write it in this form because the equations will look neater. That is all. Not, it is not uh, no, nothing fundamental about that. Okay. And finally, uh, what is this V12? It is the voltage between uh, voltage across the resistor 
or voltage at node 1 minus the voltage at node 2 okay so i have to use these voltages so what i'll do is i will use the voltages at n1 2 and 3 now again while choosing voltages there are many ways of doing it I could choose the uh, voltage across R12 as the variable, across R23 as the variable and so on. Now to be systematic and to have a clean uh, structure to the equations, what I will do is, I will not use those things but I will use the voltage between N1 and N0, between N2 and N0, between N3 and N0. Okay. Now the definition of N0 is very clear, that is the node at which I am not writing KCL. Okay. All other node voltages I express as the vo voltage between that node and the reference node that is between each node and the node where I am not writing KCL okay so that I will say voltages at node N1 2 and 3 with respect to the node N0 I will call these voltages V1 V2 and V3 okay so now it's very common to say something like the voltage at node N1 is V1. What is meant is that the voltage between N1 and the reference node is V1. Similarly, when you say the voltage at node N2 is V2, it is with respect to reference node. Never forget that a voltage is always measured between two points, two nodes. Okay. So again, between N3 and N0, it is V3. So I will say this is V3 and v2 and v1 okay so that's about the conventions so what did i just to summarize uh, in this uh, method which is called nodal analysis i will start with uh, kcl equations at n minus 1 nodes i will choose some node and call that the reference node i will not write kcl there i will write kcl at the remaining nodes and what is kcl it is the sum of currents flowing out of the node equal to zero the way I will uh, write it down is the sum of uh, currents, basically unknown currents going out of the node equals the sum of independent source currents that are coming into the node. So if you have a current source connected to that node, I will push it to the right hand side. Okay. Now this is a very common thing to do. You have uh, variables on the left hand side and uh, independent things on the right hand side and you solve for the variable. This becomes very clear as we go along. And finally, uh, the currents in resistors, I will write them in terms of voltages across the resistors times the conductance. Okay, current in each resistive branch equals the voltage across that branch times the conductance. Now I have to write the voltages. Again, I will choose the variables in a systematic way. I will choose the voltage at each node with respect to the reference node as the voltage variables. Okay. If you have any uh, questions about these definitions, please ask questions now so that we can go ahead with the circuit analysis in a smooth way. Any questions about any part of uh, what I said so far? Now there is one question uh, basically asking instead of uh, current sources if we have voltage sources what do we do right now let's not take that case i will first do it with current sources and resistors and later we'll uh, consider the case of independent voltage sources okay so looks like uh, things are clear so far so now let me go ahead and write the equations in the manner i described
Now, the KCL at node N1 will be the sum of these currents, current through R11, current through R12, current through R13, and the sum of those equal the current flowing into this node, which is I1. Okay. So, first of all, the current through this R11 is V1 divided by R11 or V1 times G11. Okay. And the current through this R12 is the voltage across it, which is V1 minus V2. Okay. We are always taking the current flowing away. So, you take the voltage at this node V1 minus the voltage at the wherever the resistor is connected, that is V2 plus V1 minus V2 times G12 plus here we have V1 minus V3 as the voltage across R13. Okay. Now uh, the voltage across R13 is V1 minus V3 and the conductance of that is G13. Now if I was taking the currents going uh, away from this node, I would say minus I1, right? Because I1 is flowing in, that would be minus I1. But, so let me first write it like this, minus I1 equal to 0. Like I said, all the independent sources I will push to the right hand side. If I have to put it, push it to the right hand side, I have to look at the current flowing into the node. Okay. On the left hand side, I have all the currents flowing out of the node and that has to be equal to uh, the current uh, flowing into the node. Okay. So, as I said, I will put all the independent variables on the right hand side. Okay. Now, at node N2, I will write it similarly. The current through R22 is V2 times G22, okay, because the voltage across that is V2, voltage between this and the reference node. And the voltage across R12 is V2 minus V1, okay. Now, uh, note that while writing the equation for node 1, for R12, I took the current from left to right. Now, I will take it from right to left, okay. That is because for every node, I will draw the, I will write the equations in terms of current flowing outwards. Okay. And the current flowing from uh, right to left is V2 minus V1 times G12. Okay. I hope that is clear. And finally, if I take this R23, then the voltage across that is V23 because I want to take the current V2 minus V3 because I would like to find the current in that direction. So, plus V2 minus V3 times G23 equals, that should be equal to all the independent current that is coming into this node and we, I do not have any independent current source connected to this node. So, this will be equal to 0. Okay. And finally, at node N3, I have the current through R33, which is V3 times G33 plus the current through R23. Again, I will take it flowing away from node uh, N3. Okay. That is, I will look at the current in this direction and that would be V3 minus V2 times G23. Okay. Plus, finally, the current through R13 that is equal to V3 minus V1 times G13 and this has to be equal to total current 
contributed by uh, independent current sources flowing into the node and that is equal to I3. Okay. So basically I have written KCL at the three nodes and I have tried to, I have followed the convention that I earlier described. All the independent sources on the right hand side and the variables on the left hand side and all the variables are basically the node voltages with respect to the reference node. Okay. Now I understand that this analysis, it is systematic analysis, so there are many steps. Like I said earlier in the course also, please be very systematic and be very careful about the science when you do these things, especially in the initial parts when you don't yet have much practice. I will stop here and then take any questions. If uh, any of you is not clear about any of these terms, then uh, uh, please ask the question and I'll answer them. Any questions at all? So everything is clear. Uh, there are no questions about uh, how I wrote these things and all the every term of uh, every equation is clear. Okay, good. So everything is clear to everybody. Now, uh, although I wrote the equations like this, I will uh, rearrange them slightly. Again, remember the variables here are uh, V1, V2 and V3. Okay, the KCL equations are written in terms of the node uh, voltages with respect to the reference node as the primary variables. So when I say, when we solve these equations, we will be solving for V1, V2, V3. And from there you can solve for everything else, okay? So this is one of the equations. This is the other equation. And finally, this is the third equation. Okay. Now I will uh, rearrange these slightly and what I will do is I will group uh, the variables. That is, I have V1 here, there and there. I don't want to have it like that. So I will write it as V1 times G11 plus G12 plus G13 minus V2 times G12 minus V3 times G13 equals I1, okay? That is, I grouped all the coefficients of V1 and V2 and V3. Then V2, here I will again uh, write the variables in the same order, minus V1 times G12 plus 
v2 g12 plus g22 plus g23 minus v3 g23 equals 0 and finally for the last one minus v1 g13 minus v2 g23 plus v3 g13 plus g23 plus g33 equals i3 okay so all i've done is to rearrange the equation so that i will uh, have the variables together okay that is each variable has all of its coefficients grouped together I think this is pretty clear and probably there will be no questions about this. Now a very common way of uh, writing out these equations okay, is in the form of a matrix. And this is because it just looks neat. That's the main reason, right? And then uh, on the computer, we have methods of uh, solving the matrix, solving uh, the inverse of the matrix. And that's why we write it like that. So now uh, the variables v1, v2, v3, I'll put it into a vector, okay? And a vector is nothing but a, in this case a 3 by 1 matrix or a 3 by 1 vector in general if you have n nodes you will have n minus 1 independent voltages so n minus 1 times 1 vector okay and now I will write this whole thing as some matrix times this variable vector equal to the independent source vector. Now what is the matrix? It's nothing but these coefficients which multiply v1, v2 and v3. Okay. So the first element of the first row will be g11 plus g12 plus g13. The second element would be whatever multiplies V2. Okay, you know that when you multiply matrices, you multiply this uh, first element by the first element here, second one by second one, and the third one by third one. So we will have minus G12 minus G13. Similarly, for V2, this uh, minus G12 is the coefficient of V1, and G12 plus G22 plus G23. is the coefficient of V2 and finally minus G23 is the coefficient of V3. Okay. And here uh, minus G13 is the coefficient of V1 and minus G23 is the coefficient of V2 and G13 plus G23 plus G33 is the coefficient of v3 okay it's exactly the same as what i have here each of these rows corresponds to each of these equations okay and this whole thing will be equal to whatever i have on the right hand side so for the first one the right hand side is i1 for the second one it is 0 and the third one it is i3 okay so this part is called the conductance matrix. Obviously, it consists of uh, conductances. And this part is the vector of uh, node voltages. I will call that V. Okay. 
and finally this is the vector of independent current sources okay i will call that i so when we write this uh, uh, equations for the circuit based on kirchhoff's current laws and express the currents as uh, voltage times conductance we will get this equation of the form which is the conductance matrix g times the variable vector v equals the source of independent vectors i okay So conductance matrix times variable vector equals source vector. Now, if you want to solve for v, this means that v equals. You know how to do this. You have matrix times vector equals another vector. This is a square matrix. It will be the inverse of this matrix times i. Okay. This is somewhat like if you had scalars. Let's say you had uh, a times x equals y. You would say that x is y divided by a, or a inverse, which is one by a times y. And now we have it in terms of matrices. So this is the solution. Okay. Now this whole thing, it's basically about setting up the equations correctly. Now, as I said, this is scalable to very large circuits. so whatever the size of circuit you have you will be able to do it like this obviously in exams and uh, in tests and by hand you will not be solving for anything more than a circuit with two nodes or at most three nodes because you will not be calculating inverses of two by uh, i mean more than a 3 by 3 matrix by hand okay but right now the point is to understand how to set this up without any errors and with confidence for any sized circuit okay any questions on anything that i have done so far what i have done is to set up the kcl equations at n minus 1 nodes and i have chosen the voltage at these n minus 1 nodes with respect to the reference node as the primary variables okay okay it appears that it is uh, pretty clear so right now i don't want to solve this i am not going to solve it for any particular circuit but uh, i just want to focus on the structure of these uh, structure of the matrix here okay let me copy this over now uh, the way i have written it is the first row corresponds to kcl at node 1 and the next is at node 2 and node 3 and i have chosen the same order for the voltages in the vector okay because i can write these in any order and i can also reorder these and change the order of the entries in the matrix but the important thing is that i choose to have the kcl equations in some order n1 first then n2 and then n3 then i'll also have the voltages in the same order v1 v2 and v3 okay and this is the kind of conductance matrix that i get 
So now uh, my question for you is, uh, what do you see about this matrix? What properties do you observe in the matrix as it is written? Okay, I think uh, many of you very easily observed that it is a symmetric matrix. That is, we have minus G12 here, minus G12 there, minus G23, minus G23, and minus G13, minus G13. Okay. <coughs> so clearly it is a symmetric matrix. Okay. Now let us focus on the diagonal, uh, the diagonal is this, right? What do you observe about the diagonal elements? It is a symmetric matrix, what do you observe about the diagonal elements? For instance, the very first entry of the matrix, right? The element one one. What is what is that? And clearly, I think this also all of you were able to uh, figure out correctly that the diagonal elements are sum of uh, conductances at that node. When I say that node, the matrix entry, this is the element A11, if I call this A matrix, A11 is the sum of conductance, conductances at node 1. Similarly, this A22 is the sum of uh, conductances at node 2 and this is at node 3. Okay. Now, what are the off-diagonal entries? What is this? Let us say I call this element A12. I think you know the matrix notation. You have A11, A12, A13 and so on. Uh, what is the, what is this element A12?
yeah again i think it's pretty clear the off diagonal uh, elements are if i take the element aij it is the conductance or the negative of the conductance between uh, the node i i and j okay so that's how we have uh, that's why this entry a12 is minus g12 that is the conductance between conduct conductance connected between node 1 and node 2 and it's also why the matrix is symmetric this is the conductance connected between node 2 and node 1 obviously that's the same as Uh, the conductance would be node one and node two, so that's how we have symmetry. But to get the symmetric structure, please note that the ordering of the node equations and the ordering of the vector has to be exactly the same. Okay. For instance, if I I could interchange these two equations, okay, this row will come here and this row will go there, and similarly on the right hand side it will change. But then the symmetry is lost. You will have the symmetric structure only if the ordering of the equations is the same as the ordering of elements in the vector okay so this is clear so now this can be extended to uh, circuits of any size right the only restrictions we have so far are that we have only independent current sources and conductances okay we have only independent current sources and conductances in the circuit with that we have all these nice properties that we get a symmetric matrix with the diagonal elements being the sum of conductances at that node and off diagonal elements being the conductance between two nodes okay the negative of that okay any questions so far and to solve for this you will uh, have to invert the matrix g and multiply the uh, variable multiply the source vector with the inverse of the matrix g okay so in summary nodal analysis consists of first of all writing kcl at n minus 1 nodes first before this let's say you choose a reference node you write the kcl at n minus 1 nodes in the form of sum of currents flowing out equals independent source currents flowing in okay and also this uh, current is written in terms of node voltages with respect to the reference node okay now what this will give you you will get an equation of the type g matrix times v vector equals the source vector okay and solving this will give you the node voltages g inverse times i okay now we have not yet solved for the complete circuit like i said earlier the complete solution consists of solving for every branch voltage and every branch current but the hard part is done now okay we have a complicated network and we have found all the node voltages okay now uh if you want to find all the branch voltages that's very easy okay for instance uh, the voltage 
across R11 is nothing but the voltage between node 1 and node 0. Okay. So let me see. Let me call this. Uh, I've already called this V1. That is the voltage between N1 and N0 is V1. N2 and N0 is V2. And N3 and uh, N0 is V3. So the voltage across R11 is V1. R22 is V2. R33 is V3. Okay. Across R12, it is V1 minus V2 in this direction. Across R23, it is V2 minus V3. And across R13, it is V1 minus V3. And also across this current source, in this direction, it is minus V1. And in this direction, it is minus V3. The reason I wrote down all these things is just to show that all the branch voltages come out of some trivial manipulation of the node voltages. Okay. So generally, when you say uh, solve for this, we will solve for the node voltages and leave it there. And if there are any other specific question that is uh, quest questions that are asked, like the branch voltage of a specific branch, you can easily uh, construct it by uh, I taking the voltages across that branch. That is taking the difference of two voltages or maybe in some cases like R11, the node voltage itself is the branch voltage. Okay. And similarly, now for branch currents, you have to go to every branch and look at the current voltage relationships. You know the voltage of every branch, so you will be able to tell the current of any branch. Okay. For resistors, the current is proportional to the voltage. And for these independent current sources, the current is already known. They are independent of the voltages. Okay. So what I want to point out is that after this, there are a couple of steps to get all the branch voltages and all the branch currents. But at this point, we say the circuit is solved because the rest of the steps are kind of trivial. Okay. Because uh, you just take the difference between some two node voltages to get the branch voltage and uh, you multiply that by conductance to get the resistor currents. Okay. So we have come to the end of uh, this lecture. In the next one, we see that our circuit has some limitations. We have not analyzed a circuit that is universal. We only have current sources and uh, resistors. Obviously, we will also have uh, independent voltage sources as well as control sources, that is dependent sources. Okay, so that will take up in the next class onwards. Now, before we leave, a couple of quick questions. So, let me first say that to this circuit, I will add a current source. Okay, yet another current source. Uh, let me call it IX just for simplicity. Now, uh, please answer the question. How will this matrix be changed? Okay. Hope you remember what I wrote. Uh, maybe I will uh, copy that over. Let me copy over this whole thing. What I did was to add this uh, current source in blue. Okay, and my question is, I have set up these uh, equations in the matrix form. How will this be changed? Okay. That is, please answer the question in terms of uh, what will change. Is it the, first of all, is it, is it the right hand side that's going to change or the left hand side? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear because we've added an independent current source that has to appear on the right hand side. So the right hand side will change. Okay, this will uh, influence the right hand side. Now, how will it change? Okay, which will change? Which of the entries will change?
So the right hand side has a, a vector with three elements. So which ones will change? Again, it's uh, pretty clear. This is connected to node 1 and node 3. Obviously, it's only the equations at node 1 and node 3 that will change. Okay. Now, what has happened is that node 2, we have not changed it at all. So, the middle row remains exactly as it is. If you look at node 1, this current source Ix is pointing towards node 1. So, it adds to the current flowing into node 1. So, instead of this I1, it will become this i1 will become i1 plus ix and if you look at this node 3 i3 is flowing in and this ix is flowing out so this part will become i3 minus ix okay and similarly if i add i2 in this direction this will be minus i2 okay so by now you should have enough uh, confidence to write down this uh, matrix and set it up for any circuit. Like I said, for arbitrary large circuits, you are not uh, expected to uh, solve it by hand, but uh, solve it on a computer. But you should be able to set up the equation for any size circuits, as long as they have only conductances and current sources. Okay. So if you have any questions, I will answer them, I'll, otherwise we will wind up the session and meet on Thursday. Okay, thanks for coming. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.